Så dagens teknologi har också begränsningar knyttat till utväxling och anonymisering av data som utväxlas. Så personvärne blir alltså ännu strängare i er. Och därför tränger vi ny teknologi som understöttar det nya strängare personvärne. Med bland annat möjlighet för inbyggd samtycke. Framtiden är teknologi som understöttar patientens översikt och tillgångsstyrning av sina egna data. So it is uh, important when we look at the SDGs that every single country has to report on and I keep stressing this because when we talk about development goals uh, we tend to think that it's only for the developing countries but in order to achieve the SDGs we need to cross link all the targets and uh, remember that uh, the important uh, tenet of the SDGs is universal health coverage. That means everybody, <laughs> including migrants, and that also member states have uh, made a commitment to leave no one behind. My PEPEX measures is parity with nationals, which should be according to our international human rights um, our legislations. What we see is that even for regular for migrant workers, basically um, we reach parity only at 70% with nationals. So to give you some examples, um, the entitlement to health care are dependent, uh, can be related to employment, uh, to the length of stay, to the length of employment, um, and different type of coverage. You also need, uh, of course, these policies to facilitate access. So they include, the, uh, you know, information about um, for the service providers. So do health staff know what migrants are entitled to according to the category of migrants? Do employers know what uh, migrant workers are entitled to? Is there a, are there policies about provision of information to migrants? Is there a, a cultural mediator or patient navigators, facilitators who can provide this information? We also need some responsiveness. Now, health systems are supposed to be responsive to the need of the population. If your population is more elderly, you'll have to, you know, the health system has to respond to this need and actually actively uh, provide um, um, the required services. We need leadership from government and actually Norway is one of the notable countries that has a migrant health strategy. What happens at the implementation is another question. And of course uh, policies about contribution of migrants um, and so forth. But overall from what we know uh, and the healthy migrant effect was already mentioned because migrants tend to be um, quite young. But there is also this tendency to, after several years, to have this exhausted migrant effect with higher rates of working accidents, poor self-reported health, um, and more syndicators on physical, mental, and social health. the deficit of uh, information that's being transferred around uh, patient care in general within uh, Europe, a bit, um, within our countries as well as between countries. And um, um, a lot of work needs to continue to be done and this is where the electronic transmission of medical records is an opportunity to improve uh, continuity of care within country as well as between country of course. So this was developed and um, translated and so forth and also then to develop um, a template and this electronic personal and health record. So this was intended and is still as a unified instrument for voluntary health assessment of um, newly arrived migrants, uh, asylum seekers and to contribute to the integration by of course identifying needs and also to support the cross-border directive and cooperation. So we developed this uh, tool, which is um, a platform as well. It allows progressive updating of the status of uh, by health professionals uh, within centers, within a country, as well as between countries.
Uh, we also uh, can use it now for the relocation. Um, we'll be working on the automatic translation uh, in several languages. And um, right now it's implemented in six countries. I think most Polish migrants, especially the ones working in the construction sector, are not planning to stay, right? They're working you know, temporarily, and then it goes on, like you were both saying, maybe 10 years or more, right? Uh, but it wasn't an initial plan to move. If it was an initial plan to move, you'd maybe take some steps to learn the language, to establish yourself, to familiarize yourself also with the health system. But because it's continually kind of, you know, earning money, working in Norway, but living in Poland for many, then it becomes very different. But then we also have this other big group, which are actually settling down. So I think increasingly as a researcher of Polish migration, I feel the need to stress that this is not one group. We have to stop dealing with it as if it's one group. And I think we've seen it so clearly here. And I think there are many different ways of delimiting it. I think in terms of the health risk, certainly there's, um, there should be a main emphasis, I think, on those who have uh, work which is not permanent and who are within that group, those that commute and those that live here more permanently. I think all, all, already there you have some divisions that are important. And I think that you, we should we could challenge the government in saying that um, you should include migration in as a uh, an area where we should, should do more research. Connecting migration and e-health should be could be a good uh, um, connection because I think we could do research and, and developments to show how we can develop low threshold. Um, systems or apps it's one thing to count on uh, on uh, you know on the response from uh, the civil sector and usually they do respond but it's still i think a joint responsibility you know and for migrant workers the employers of course have a responsibility or you know be it individual you know if you employ a domestic worker or if you are you know a small company or a big company and um, as, as well as the government. I think responsibilities at every, at every level. Yeah. And there's virtually no integration support programs for anyone else. You're on your own. You know, if the conditions or entitlements are, you know, at par with nationals, that it will, you know, the generous basically benefits uh, social or health will attract more migrants. There is absolutely no evidence. So migration is an opportunity. I mean, it's not just rhetorics. Uh, it is an opportunity to look at to what extent the system, uh, health system, or other, you know, uh, e-health, uh, generally speaking, digital, is actually adapted to the diversity of society, not just for migrants, for as you mentioned, for different groups. So it is an opportunity to actually improve the system for, for everybody because we all diverse in, in, in and will continue to to change in different ways. Living in, in Oslo, it, it's really, it, it's impossible to miss the Polish labor force. I mean, they're the ones that build things, they're the ones that fix things. They're the ones that you call when you have an emergency and need assistance and repair. I mean, who's looking after them? We hope today starts some new discussions. But for Iowa, and we hope that we also we form some relationships to push this issue forward. Because we need a bit more momentum when it comes to improved care for migrants. What does a migrant do that can't get time off nine o'clock at night? He wants to go somewhere. There's not many clinics that are even open. I mean, and there's not many even private care that you can pay for at night to go to. I mean, the system is designed for generous employers to give people time off. And, and follow the system. But it does need to be one discussion how we would treat migration health together.